Agenda 21 is kind of a code name for a master plan originated at the United Nations to change the political and economic system of the world to one of total collectivism. And in order to do that, people must not be allowed to have independence. They must be dependent on the state for everything. Otherwise, they won't, they won't be easily controlled by the state. That means they can't have private property, mostly. They cannot have land of their own. They have to live in, preferably, high-rise apartments uh, that are provided to them by the state as a benefit, so to speak. Oh, good, we got a free apartment. But they want, these people at the top want all humans to be dependent on the largesse of the state. That means that they don't want anybody living out in the boonies. Anybody that's got a couple of acres of land and his own water supply and can grow his own food and that kind of thing, or have some sheep or some chickens, these people are a threat to the collectivist society because they aren't going to go to the politicians and say, please feed me, please clothe me, please give me shelter. They tend to be independent. That's the secret behind Agenda 21. They want people out of the country. They want corporations out there growing all the food and that kind of thing, but they don't want anybody living out there because that way they cannot be controlled. In order to control mankind, we have to get them all into the big cities. We have to rack them up and stack them up, get them dependent on the state for their food, their shelter, their electrical power, their water, everything. That's the dirty secret behind Agenda 21. Throughout history, different and opposing religious views have been the focal point for many wars. Countless human lives have been lost, yet the past has taught us very little, judging by some of today's conflicts. Azerbaijan has hosted the second World Religious Leader Summit in the country's capital, which participants hope could be a good example for the entire world. This could be a starting point for something big. What if God created transgender people that says male and female, not male or female? God also has feminine attributes. The one who had created men in the world, the one who brought women in this world, is the one who brought me in this world. She, he, I'm just comfortable with all oh, because that is me. You think this is the devil's work? Yeah, and I have the calling that is the devil's work. Yes, I now overseas to chaos erupting in Hong Kong. Protests escalating to dangerous levels this morning. Senior foreign correspondent Ian Panel tracking the very latest. Good morning, Ian. Yeah, good morning, Robin. That's right, really disturbing scenes in multiple flashpoints in Hong Kong. Today's clashes came after the mysterious death of a protester late Friday, and it's made an already tense situation there even worse. This morning, the protests in Hong Kong taking a new violent turn as police open fire on unarmed demonstrators who've been fighting for months for political reform, autonomy from China, and police accountability. We will spare no effort in finding ways and means 
that could end the violence in Hong Kong. This officer wrestling with a man dressed in white while another protester in a black shirt can be seen rushing towards them. The officer then turns and fires at least one demonstrator who was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Today's protest was dubbed Operation Dawn, targeting highways with blockades, vandalizing subway stations, and in a sign of how violent this has become, an argument with a passerby ends with him being doused in gasoline and set on fire. Police again firing off tear gas in the heart of Hong Kong's business district, sending panicked residents running to shelter indoors. Students are at the heart of this protest, and today at the Hong Kong Polytechnic, barricades are tossed in the air, while others douse them in gasoline. This heartbreak and horror tonight in a tight-knit college community in Atlanta. Days after a student was found murdered, one of her best friends and that woman's boyfriend are under arrest. A former substitute teacher is facing charges after disturbing video shows her beating a student. Cell phone footage shows Tiffany Langford punching the 16-year-old special needs student numerous times in a classroom. This is outside Austin, Texas. Langford was charged with second degree felony aggravated assault and she was fired. Scientists in Singapore have created human skin in a petri dish. Well, they say the development is a game-changing step that will mean less use of animals for testing cosmetic products. Made up of skin cells from donors and collagen, it has the same chemical and biological properties as human skin. This is Santa Clarita, California, and you're looking at the pictures there that have become all too common in this country. The evacuations afterward, the students being taken away from the school. We do know at this hour there were five victims, all students at the school. Uh, we are told by the L.A. County Sheriff's Department at this hour that the shooter, the alleged shooter, is in custody and is being treated at the hospital, believed uh, to be a member of the student body there. We're coming from the Far East this morning then, where a 19-year-old college student opened fire on his classmates, killing one and injuring three others before turning the gun on himself. Come on, Andrew, okay? Is there someone in the passenger seat? Body cam video captured the dramatic moments when Farmville police officers pushed through the smoke and flames to save an unconscious woman trapped in a burning car in the Central Virginia field. Is anybody in there? All right. Come on. You see better on? Within seconds, Officer Dalton fully frees the driver and begins pulling her away from the fireball with the help of Officer Olivia Martin and two other good Samaritans.
Your government and our government and all the other major governments of the world know what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. But they haven't told you. It looks more like a war zone than a street protest. Bolivia's political unrest turned deadly on Friday as supporters of former president Evo Morales clashed with police in the town of Sacaba. The Libyan Coast Guard are responding to an alert from Malta and Italy, asking them to intercept a boat full of migrants heading for Europe. So, 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 uh, okay, okay, please sit down, please sit down. One of the migrants asked to speak to us without being identified for fear of reprisals.
60 fires are still burning in New South Wales, with predictions that the worst is yet to come. Three people have died and 150 homes have been destroyed in these bushfires which have torn through the east of Australia. It's only since we've got family and we've got our lives and we've got great neighbours and great friends and it'll all, it, they all rally together. With temperatures expected to soar and winds to change direction, Communities here have been told to prepare for catastrophic conditions. Google's new deal with a healthcare company in the United States, which will see it gather data on millions of Americans. That's what we're going to start with, with our business editor, Stephen Carl, to tell us more. Stephen. Eve, the tech giant, has signed an agreement with Ascension, which is America's second largest hospital system. It's going to store and analyse data on their patients. Dubbed Project Nightingale, it represents a major push by Google into the healthcare industry. As a matter of protection, would the United States have to have a slightly different yes, security relationship we can. with Canada? Yes, and that will throw the Five Eyes collaboration, which is, serves the security interests of every Canadian and every American, into jeopardy. It, it, we just, it, it can't be done. Can't share. I don't see how we can share in the way we have. It's not a joke. It's truly serious. Incredible. That's Susan Rice, former National Security Advisor to Barack Obama. I can't think of a single thing she would support Donald Trump on, but she says on the concerns for Huawei, the massive Chinese telecommunications country uh, company, Trump is right and that it is a danger that every country in the West should ward off. With every new quality of life improvement, we are forced to concede more of our identity in order to use it. Scattered throughout the world today in a multitude of devices are trillions of cameras, voice recording devices, and various sensors. The United Nations Human Rights Declarations are a fraud. There are two of them. There was one that was put together by Eleanor Roosevelt in the 1940s. There was another one that came out, I think, in 1966. And they talk about a lot of the rights that we expect, uh, the right to travel, the right to this, the right to that. They don't talk about the right to uh, own a weapon. They don't want the people to be armed. They don't talk about several other rights. But the key about those United Nations documents that is a f so much of a fraud is the fact that they can suspend the rights and you, you don't have that right anymore. American system is unalienable rights granted by God Almighty and only God Almighty can suspend them, and I don't think he wants to do that. 